Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and uh, I thought I'd do a video today talking about organizing your seeds, thinking about transplants, thinking about planting times, when to start transplants, and I just thought I'd give you a little look at the state of my garden right now, just so you get a sense of uh, where I'm coming from here in Nova Scotia, Canada in uh, early, uh, what is it, early, or is it the end of February, almost early March, but end of February, 2024. So let's have a little look at the garden. Not much to see, but I'll show you anyway. That's where I was sitting. That right there is a pond. <laughs> it's just covered in snow, right? Uh, there's snow everywhere here, right? You can see normally these are garden beds. They're all covered. There's like a foot of snow in the garden, give or take, right? Even the, uh, the opening, the doorway here, I actually just climbed the fence. I couldn't be bothered to shovel this out. Right, it's going to melt eventually, so I just climbed it. So I've not been out here doing anything. I do have some parsnips underneath that dome, but I've been eating the ones I got inside my house. Just thought I'd have you, give you a look at the garden to see where everything is. We're still frozen. There's still snow everywhere. Uh, someone was asking me about pruning. It's too early for me right now, really. I'll be doing that in, you know, maybe uh, just under a month from now, middle of March, end of March sort of thing. All right, so. If you're like me, uh, you either ordered your seeds uh, in, in January or something like that, or maybe even before. Uh, and if you, if you like free shipping, you want to help support the channel, order your seeds from Vessi Seeds. Use my coupon code GAVS24 to get free shipping. Check out the, uh, the details in the uh, description box of this video for more details on that. Now, there's a little plug at the end if you want to watch that and get more, more information about that. Okay. So you've got your seeds, and I've got... I got a nice box here. I ordered seeds. I ordered some uh, bare root strawberries. I think I might order one other thing, a bush of some kind. I can't remember what it's called. Nordic, Norse something. Anyway, some sort of nice berry bush. Anyway, and potatoes. But they're not going to send the potatoes or the berry bush or the uh, strawberries until it's time to plant them. So all they've sent me is my seeds. So I got a whole bunch of seeds here, right? And I got some of this, uh, you know, growing medium. I'll talk more about that in a little bit. Now, I have a way, a really, really simple way of organizing my seeds. I've tried, like some people have these little box cabinets with all these little drawers, and they have, you know, carrots, peas. I've tried that, it's a waste of time. I have a really simple method for planting seeds, and it really comes down to whether they're something that I start as a transplant or something I direct seed, and when they get planted. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I plant everything in my garden according to the stages of growth of the dandelion. Everybody's got dandelions, get dandelions in your yard or your neighbor's yard or, or on the street or on the road or in the ditch near your house, right? The dandelion is a plant with roots that go down into the ground. It's basically a ground thermometer. It tells you how much heat has been absorbed, how much sun energy has been absorbed by the ground. Dandelion doesn't do anything until it's had enough, until the ground's warm enough, until it's actually gotten enough sun. So when I plant things, yeah, I look at, do I see dandelion greens popping into the ground? Have the dandelion line started making yellow flowers and have the flowers turn white. Those are the three stages of the dandelion in my opinion. And everything's organized around that. I call dandelion green, dandelion yellow, dandelion white. I've done a video on this. I got a whole article on my Substack page, which is free. You know, that article's free anyway, <laughs> right? Some of the stuff on my Substack page is behind a paywall, but that article's totally free. I'll put a link to it at the end of this video. Okay, so what I do is I organize everything in terms of that, and I put the stuff that needs to be transplanted on the front. And I don't do a lot of transplants. I only have one south-facing window. I don't bother with grow lights. I find it a tedious, irritating waste of time. I like having them just in the window. That way I think about them. Uh, they're there every morning when I'm having breakfast. Um, and I, I, because of that, I got one south facing window. I don't, I don't grow a lot of transplants, but I do grow some. Um, anyway, dandelion green, things I plant when I see the dandelion green starting to pop up out of the ground, which is usually the earliest you can plant anything because that's when the ground starts to thaw, things start to warm up, usually in April where I live. So I got spinach here. I got parsnips. Actually, parsnips can be planted the following, the previous fall. You can, you can sow your parsnips in the fall. I've done it before, and they'll come out in the spring. Some years I remember to do that, some years I don't. 
and um, uh, green onion, you know, just the ones that you'd use in a stir fry, that sort of thing. I got those, you plant those, dandelion green, and uh, lettuce, okay? So those are the things I direct seed as early as possible, basically. When I see, you know, basically, if the dandelions are growing, uh, lettuce and dandelions are kind of like relatives, I think, if I recall correctly. Um, so when they're, when I see dandelions growing, it means things like dandelions will grow and really, really tough things will grow. Um, different plants have different, different plant seeds have different minimum germination temperatures. The seed has to be damp, it has to be in the soil, and it has to be a certain temperature for anything to happen at all. And spinach and lettuce and parsnips, uh, green onion, things like that, they've got a pretty low minimum germination temperature. So those are the things I plant out then. So they're all together in one little elastic band, right? I mean, if I'm going out to the garden after work in April, to plant something, it's one of these, right? I probably won't get them all planted in one night, but I'll just grab this, stick it in my pocket and go. It's one of these things, okay? The next stage is dandelion yellow, which is usually sometime in May, around the middle of May, early May, middle of May, late May, sometime around there, we start seeing yellow dandelion flowers all over the place, okay? So uh, for that stage, and all these things I direct seed. Everything I've been talking about here is direct seeded. I don't bother transplants. So I got the carrots here. I got cabbage. I got a kind of uh, Tokyo Bacana mustard. It's like a salad green or cooked green. I'll use it as a cooked green. Uh, pak choy, another oriental sort of green. Uh, Brussels sprouts, beets, Swiss chard, and uh, super sugar snap peas. You can plant peas a little bit earlier. So you can plant peas, uh, you know, when, not when you first see the dandelion greens, but when they're like tall. Uh, but, you know, so usually the peas are the first thing I plant. As soon as I see any sign of yellow dandelions, and don't confuse the dandelion with the colt's foot, they're different plants. <laughs> I did a whole video on that, so I'm not gonna talk about it here. Dandelions, there's a lot of things that look like dandelions. Only dandelions are dandelions. Okay, so as soon as I, as soon as I first start to see any kind of yellow dandelion flowers anywhere, that weekend is devoted to peas, right? Because they have a really, really, they don't mind the cold, right? The, the cold will not kill the seed, okay? So these are all things I direct sow when I see dandelion yellow flowers. Now, finally, we got the heat loving things, the tender things, the things that can't go out until last frost or can't go out until like really close to that. <laughs> but generally speaking, these things can't go out until you're all past the risk of frost, okay? Um, so in the front, I've got the things I'm gonna transplant, right? Because they're, the, they're the things that are gonna be dealt with first, right? All these other things are gonna be direct seeded in the ground once it's nice and warm, sometime in June for me, okay? But really, when I start seeing the dead, when the yellow dandelions turn white and all that fluffy starts start blowing off, you know, when you're a kid, you blow in the, the white fluffy dandelion, right? That's when you plant all these other things because usually it's a very good indicator that you're past all risk of frost. I have a really simple way of deciding when to plant things and that's what I do and it works. So anyway, all I'm gonna do for transplants this year is, uh, Red pepper, I got a Carmen variety, it's supposed to be like a sweet Italian, sweet Italian variety. Uh, basil, I'm gonna start indoors. And tomato, that's it. <laughs> Not gonna bother with eggplant this year. Uh, I might do a separate video on that. I actually had success for the first time in my life using all kinds of tricks with eggplant last year. Um, but I'm, I just, it's kind of like a real estate thing. Something had to go and I chose not to plant eggplant, but I actually can grow them here and it does work. Um, maybe that's a separate video. I don't want to get into it here. But the pepper and the basil and the tomato will be started indoors on my south facing window right next to my dining room table, which my wife just loves, turning that into a little grow up. Um, so those things will be planted first, but of the other heat loving things, I've got my pole beans, I've got my bush beans, I got a Vortex bean and a Caspian yellow bean, love yellow beans. Uh, I've got uh, a weird combination here, parsley, dill, and cucumber. Now parsley and dill, those, both those things can be planted when the dandelion yellow flowers are out. These are all dandelion white things. The reason I have them in this group is that when I plant my cucumbers, my pickling cucumbers, I plant them on a trellis down the middle of a bed. 
And on either side of the cucumbers, I plant a row of parsley on one side and a row of dill on the other side. Okay, so it's not that these are things that can't be sown until later, but the way I sow them, I right, always plant parsley and dill with, with uh, trillist cucumbers. These are pickling cucumbers, the kind you train up a trillist, not the ones that go all over the place and make, you know, a big <laughs> sloppy uh, sort of uh, salad cucumbers, you know, the ones that sort of take over. These are ones we train up like a vine, right, in a four by 10 bed. So that leaves either side, right, either side of that trellis that goes down the middle of the bed for something to plant. So I plant a parsley and dill. Um, I plant parsley because I've got room for it. I plant the dill because it goes with the pickles when I make my uh, fermented pickles. That's it. Other, also in with this group, I've got uh, pumpkin and winter squash, winter sweet, uh, zucchini, what they call summer squash, uh, goldie. Uh, I got another winter squash called uh, Honey Boat Delicata, I'm trying the Delicata this year. And uh, another kind of uh, zucchini called Bossa Nova. I think, I think that's a zucchini. I believe. I'm pretty, yes, I'm pretty sure Bossa Nova is a zucchini. Yeah, because it's a summer squash, yes. Okay, so basically I've got my squashes uh, and uh, pumpkins and cucumbers, cucurbits, beans, right? And the peppers and the tomatoes and the basil, right? They're all in one group. Right, so that's, that's, that's my organization system, right? It, that way it's simple. If I have to go out in the garden in the evening after work and it's early, I'll take this pack. Later on, I got a lot of work to do once I start seeing yellow dandelions. Everything in this pack has to go in the ground over the course of about one or two weeks, right? So I just take the whole thing with me, right? And then once I start seeing the white dandelion flowers, these are the things I take out with me to the garden. It's really, really simple. So that's my system for organizing my seeds and for planting things. And that's what I transplant. I want to talk a little bit about transplanting. Uh, so it's around the end of February. I think this, is, this, this will be the last week. It's, it's a Sunday right now that I'm filming. I can't remember the exact date, but this is the, this was the last week of February, February. So a lot of people start planting their transplants really early in the year. And if you do that and you enjoy it and all that sort of stuff, great, more power to you, okay? Uh, what I wanna talk about is do you need to do that? Do I do that? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> like I always look at uh, fe February and March. For me, they're like months where I don't have to, like they're between months. I, I take my kids skiing and I go hiking in the woods and I scout out new fishing spots and the garden's like this. And it's not really till the end of March that I start thinking about my garden anyway, right? I start, someone who was asking me about pruning, I don't, I won't be doing that till the end of March, right? So like almost a month from now. Um, but in my experience, and this works for where I live, right? I don't bother with uh, my peppers until around the middle of March, beginning of March, middle of March, right? And, uh, and this year I'm gonna be a little bit later than normal with my peppers, but you know, um, because we're, we're, going away for, we're going away for March break. Um, so I won't be able to do anything until March break is over. So really for me, it's like beginning or middle of March, that's when I start things like peppers and eggplant. And then it's not till the beginning, like beginning of April that I start my indoor tomato transplants and things like tomatoes, okay? Um, now, part of this, is the way I go about setting up my transplants. I use a little trick to get my seeds germinated. If, if you're new to transplanting, you know, you get the little seed tray and you put the soil on the seed tray and you plant the little seed and you water it and you water it and you water it and you water it. And then you wonder if it's too wet or if it's too dry or if it's not hot enough or it's not cold enough. And you just agonize and then you watch, because uh, you're watering it too much, all the soil in your transplants gets all that weird na nasty fungus on it. <laughs> All that sort of stuff, right? Uh, I got a great trick for getting around that, and it's a germination technique called the baggy method. Really, really simple. Uh, I've done videos on it before. You just uh, get a little piece of paper towel, put your seeds on the paper towel, you know, put another piece of paper towel on top of that. Just wet it the slightest little bit, teaspoon of water just so it's damp. 
you stick that in a little Ziploc bag and stick it somewhere warm and just wait. And it's, it's like, it's sterile. It's gonna be on your counter in the house somewhere, so it's gonna be at room temperature. It's going to germinate, right? It doesn't need sun, it doesn't need anything in particular, it just needs to be warm enough, right? Seeds don't need light, most seeds anyway. They don't need, you can put it in the sun if you want, but then you risk it getting too hot or drying out somehow. So I just leave them on the counter, okay? And I just keep, keep an eye on them. After about three or four days, you know, every day you check them. And once you see the slightest little thing happening with the seed, something's starting to poke out of the seed, you very carefully and gingerly using a toothpick or something, take those seeds out and you put them in your seed tray and you plant them. That way you know, you know you've got germination. You know something's gonna grow there and you know that in a matter of days or so, you're gonna see something starting to shoot up, okay? Peppers can take weeks to germinate when you do them in a seed tray. But I found with the baggy method, they pretty consistently germinate in about a week. So it's a really, it, it just speeds up the time. I think a lot, of time, a lot of the reasons people start their transplants early is they're leaving themselves room for failures and setbacks. Uh, so with the technique I use, it still works. And even if you have a failure, you can still, I mean, last year, something went wrong with a lot of my peppers and I replanted a bunch the first week of April. And for those of you that watched my garden videos last year, I had a great crop of peppers last year. Uh, even some of the eggplants, which were like you know, two, three feet high by the end of summer, um, some of those were a late start because of a fail. So it's not the end of the world. When you use that baggy method to get them germinated, uh, you know, it, it's so much more reliable, it works great. But the other reason I start them a bit later I can't put any of my heat-loving plants out till like June anyway, right? It's quite a while before they want to go out. And I don't want some tall, leggy plants that are growing in a tiny amount of soil. I want them indoors for as little time as possible. If you talk to experts about which transplants should you buy at a garden center, they're not going to tell you to, oh, buy the biggest, leggiest ones with flowers on them. No, they tell you to buy the short ones, buy the young ones, right? I mean, plants want to grow outdoors in the sun, in the ground, okay? So the greater portion, because they're getting the real sun, and you can see them squinting, I got one eye closed like some sort of pirate. It's because there's sun right there, and it's pretty intense, right? <laughs> so <laughs> plants, I don't want them on the sun, but plants love it, right? So you want, you want to, you don't want to overdo the length of time your plants are growing indoors. You want to get them started indoors, you get a bit of a head start if you have a shorter growing season like I do, obviously, right? Um, but, but you don't want them to grow and grow and grow and grow indoors, right? You want them to be, you know, maybe a month or so old, but not two months or three months old before you put them out. I mean, you can do all of that and people do it, um, but I find the plant prefers a shorter amount of time indoors and to live most of its life outdoors and even if it isn't huge when it goes in it's like this think about once it's outdoors it's getting better soil than what you have indoors you got all the soil organisms you got the range you got all that sort of stuff right it's getting much better sun right the sun from a plant's point of view sun is food right so there's more food out here <laughs> the energies from the sun for the things like the tomatoes and peppers and that sort of thing uh, yeah, you, you don't want them being pot bound and root bound and overgrown indoors. You want them, you know, big enough so that they can kind of fend them for themselves. Uh, usually my peppers are anywhere from 8 to 10 to 12 inches by the time I bring them out here, right? I don't want them any bigger than that, right? <laughs> right? They can continue growing up out here where everything's ideal for them, right? So that's when I start my transplants. I start the uh, peppers around the beginning or middle of March. This year I'm going to be a little bit later than that. And I start the tomatoes around the beginning of April. And I don't put them out till June. And I'm going to do the same thing with, I'm going to start the basil the same time I start my tomatoes indoors. So the basil will be start, started around the beginning of April. So that's where I am with everything. Sorry, I haven't been making uh, videos. It's just, it's just been bad luck. The weather hasn't been right on the days I could film a video. And, and, and on the days where the weather's right, I got something I got to do with my kids. You know, they're teenagers now, so they're, you know, they're busy. <laughs> That's stuff I got to do with them sometimes. And they have to come first. That's just the way it works. Uh, but, you know, it's a beautiful day outside today. I thought I could make this uh, video and get outside and just show you the garden a little bit. Oh, yes. I wanted to talk about the... Uh, 
this here stuff. So I've played around. I mean, this is this is great stuff. It's called uh, uh, Premium Organic Seed Starting Mix Biologic uh, Pro Mix. Okay. So uh, I've played around over the years using stuff like this, which is great stuff, and cheap dollar store stuff. And I, I found both kind of work, uh, but I like the texture of this stuff. So what I found I like to do is I like to take this Pro Mix. I mean, it's not cheap, right? It's, it's, it's the best stuff and it's not cheap. I buy the Pro Mix, but then I mix it half and half with just like cheap 99 cent dollar store potting mix. <laughs> really, really black stuff. And I find it's a great combination. The two things that that, um, that stuff that the, the dollar store black stuff, when you put it in your transplant pot with this stuff and with all the roots of the plant, it comes out in a really nice cube. <laughs> it just forms up really nice uh, and it's cheaper. So that's, that's my system. I take that dollar store stuff and I sort of, wa I, I water this down with cheap dollar store soil. And I find that, you know, if you're, if you're finding, um, you know, uh, things being tight and you want to save some money. I mean, you can just use the dollar store soil. I've done that. Uh, where, I mean, I'm just talking, I'm not even talking about um, transplant soil at the dollar store. I'm talking about potting soil, the stuff you use for, you know, mother-in-law's tongue and aloe and whatever your you know, house plants, okay? Just the cheap old house plant soil. It's the cheapest stuff they sell. It'll work for transplants, but I find when you go to water the transplants, it doesn't always accept the water readily. It's almost like it can be, if it dries out, it becomes kind of waterproof. I found this ProMix stuff it really accepts the water really well. So that's another advantage of the ProMix. Also, the stuff has, you know, slow release nutrients and stuff like that. So you don't have to uh, fertilize your plants till pretty close to the end where you put a really uh, diluted amount. Just a tiny little bit of fertilizer the last, you know, couple of weeks, you got the plants indoors because you know, you know, the roots have filled the pot and they're basically, the plant needs more than <laughs> everything that's in that pot's kind of been used up. Um, but yeah, if you mix that <laughs> cheap stuff in with it, it seems to work pretty good. Uh, anyway, that's everything I wanted to talk about. Uh, just an all around video about organizing your seeds and transplants and how I figure that all out. So I hope you found this interesting. <laughs> if you did, please like, share, subscribe. Check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. Check out my outdoors channel, Outdoors in the Cheap, if you're into hiking and being out in the woods and fishing and stuff like that. We've been doing a little bit of ice fishing this winter. Uh, other than that, until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching. Hey, do you like getting free shipping? Then go to Vessies.com to buy whatever you need for your garden this year and use my coupon code GAVS24 to get free shipping as long as there's a pack of seeds in the order and there's no oversized items. Check out the description box of this video for details. You can buy everything you need from Vessies. They have seeds, fruit bushes and trees, soil amendments, pest solutions, tools, clothing, and lots of other stuff too. So yeah, if you want to help support everything I'm doing here and you like free shipping, and they sell something you need, buy it from them and use my coupon code. Happy gardening!